Hey creatives, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nila and I make videos about bullet journaling and creativity. I know it's been a while since I posted a new video in February. Did I even post one? I can't remember. <laughs> Last video was the February setup and I actually wanted to post something in between. I asked you in this last video if you would be interested in my mental and physical health tracking and I tried to film that and I totally failed. <laughs> I screwed up the audio, I filmed for over an hour and had just video clips without any sound. And when something like that happens, I have an incredible hard time starting over. So that didn't really happen. <laughs> and I also realized that the video was kind of boring to watch, I guess. So here we are nearly at the end of February and we are already at the March setup. And since there was no other video in February, I thought I make this a little extended version <laughs> and I want to show you at first my process of planning these spreads to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes behind the planning progress <laughs> maybe that's interesting to some of you if you're not interested you can just skip that part I will as always have some chapters in the video and since I didn't make this habit health tracking video i wanted to take a bit more time in this one to talk a bit more in depth about it hopefully you get a good dose of bullet journaling content here and hope that you enjoy it even though it's a bit on the longer side this month and i guess without further ado let's jump into the video let's jump actually on my computer this time change things up a bit hope you like it and um yeah let's do this First, we are opening the program Affinity Publisher. It is a pretty good alternative for Adobe InDesign. And if you are searching for affordable Adobe alternatives, I can totally recommend checking out the Affinity software. This is not sponsored though. What I am doing here is hopefully self-explanatory, but to guide you through a little bit, I have this document for theme planning, which I use whenever I feel like I need to sort layouts out a bit more intense. And that is usually the case when I plan to do some Dutch door layouts, because I find that quite hard to get, to get it right in my head. Also, when I am not sure about colors or the design in general, it helps me a lot to visualize what I want to go for. However, I am not too detailed in the planning. I just try to figure out where things need to go in what way, where I would have to cut things, and I try to create a general feeling for my theme. For this, I use the internet. <laughs> And here I downloaded some lemon graphic from Freepik and a picture from Pinterest. And I hope that I don't get in trouble for showing this, but I hope it's all right since I just use it for the purpose in this document and in this screen recorded video. And then I just move things around, change layer options and do stuff like that until I'm happy with the outcome. And here we are in my bullet journal. For the length of this video, I already did my monthly reflection page and it is the exactly same one as last month. Next to this, I am creating my March cover page as I always do. And as you know by now, I went for a lemon theme and I honestly don't really know why. Maybe it is because I recently worked on extending my lemon tattoo and yes, I did that by myself. <laughs> Um, maybe it is because I painted a canvas with lemons or I just was longing for some fresh summer vibes even though it is still winter here and that is just so de depressing. <laughs> 
I started with this quite simple painting of two lemons and here you can see that I also decided to change the background color since I thought that the pink would be a little too much for me for a whole month. For all of the painting in the setup I used my gouache paints at first right from the tube and later I also used my dry gouaches in my palette as well. This month I decided to add a little quote or let's say a friendly reminder and it is it's very okay not to know yet. I found this on Pinterest of course and I chose it to remind myself not to drive myself insane because there's a lot of stuff I can't figure out at the moment. Things I don't know how or if they will work at all. There are so many questions at the moment I don't know how to move forward at all and I tend to overthink, get anxious and frustrated a lot about these things. And even though this little reminder probably won't change that, I wanted to write it down. It is okay not to know yet. Flipping over to the calendar spread where I decided to change things up this month. First of all, I made it bigger than in the last two months. These days are now 6x6 squares large and this is because I found myself using my calendar a lot more in February for weekly planning and not using my daily spreads a lot. So I wanted to maximize the space for this. Also, I moved my goals, tasks and other sections over to the next spread so that this is just a simple calendar overview with nothing to distract me. To explain my design a bit more, I had this idea to paint the whole backgrounds of all the spreads in one color with some lemons and leave only the spaces where I would write in white. I hope that makes sense to you. In addition, I wanted to create some Dutch doors with tabs, so I have everything I use in a monthly setup in one place, if that makes sense as well. <laughs> you know, my head is a bit weird when it comes to that. When it comes to the painting, I just used a variety of different brushes and filled out the lemons after I painted most of the blue backgrounds. I tried to paint as accurate around the spaces for the lemons as possible. And for the calendar, I decided to add a dark background for the numbers of the days. And I just used kind of a flat brush to mostly draw some straight lines that worked kind of well. But I am happy with the not perfect look of the page. I kind of like the drawn style of it. And in the end I also added some dividing lines with a grey Sakura Pigma Micron. And yeah, I added some highlights to the lemons and last but not least, the numbers of the days. Next up is my planning spread. I called it planning spread, even though I messed up the tabs a bit. <laughs> But it includes a section for intentions, which usually I call goals, but since I've not really used them in the past, I thought I might just journal a bit about some intentions for the month. As always, there's a task list for my to-dos, which I successfully ignore every single month. And this month I decided to just add a little YouTube set section instead of a whole page since, well, you know how much I must have used it in February. And then I added my still remaining favorite monthly favorite section. Once I am done with this spread, we're moving to my tracker spread and the extended explanation I promised you. <laughs> Usually I would have a combined spread of a line a day and my habits and mood tracker, but not this month. 
in a bit we will have my usual table for all my habits in quotation marks that I am tracking on the left side and then on the right is my graph for my mood, energy, stress and period. Why did I say habits in quotation marks? I find that this usual bullet journal habit tracker reminds me a lot of pushing yourself to do all the things that you should do, like doing sports, drinking free liter of water, being productive, etc. While I have a lot of normal things plus some mental health things in my tracker. First, to keep an overview, I separate these habits into columns. These are mood, things I did and health. The mood column includes habits that affect my mood, surprisingly, such as the quality of my sleep, if I had social contact, if I was overwhelmed or overthinking, or if I experienced anything like a meltdown or anxiety. In the things I did section I keep track of daily things like getting outside, being creative, working on something like YouTube, going to the shops or having an appointment. And last but not least in the health column which is usual health stuff, did I drink enough water, eat healthy, moved, flossed or also did I have a headache because I get them quite often. And by the way, I added the habits off camera. This is why the space at the top where the habits would go is empty here at the moment, but I hope you can imagine what I mean. After tracking all of this, I review my mood, energy and stress in the graph on the left side. To this graph, I add some guidelines, one in the middle and one at the height eight. <laughs> so at the eight square. My mood and energy I track as 1 being the lowest and 10 being the best, while the stress is the opposite. The middle guideline is simply to tell if those parameters were in the good or bad half, and line 8 tells me if especially my stress is going into the critical or unmanageable area. And stress for me means mostly emotional stress at the moment, because for me it definitely makes sense to think about and define the meaning of the things you track for yourself instead of just putting them in there because other people do that. I personally do all my tracking in the morning for the day before or that went ahead. <laughs> and I know it seems like a lot of work but all of that combined gives me a pretty clear picture of how my day was and especially to recognize what affects my well-being and to see some patterns in my mood changes, etc. And this is so important to me at the moment because I am still working through some mainly mental stuff <laughs> and having this information might be helpful for doctors or therapy appointments. So the goal here is definitely not to motivate me to be the most productive, healthy and happy self I can be. It is just simply a tool to observe myself. In addition to my monthly tracking spreads, I also like to use collections to write down specific thoughts, information or notes about my mental health as well as my health tracker that I set up in my 2023 bullet journal setup. If you haven't watched that by now and you are curious, I link that in the info card. And I know that this intense tracking system might work or not work for you and that probably it can be different from time to time. But if you're having some issues you're dealing with, it doesn't matter if it's in a physical or mental way, it can definitely be helpful to think of ways to track symptoms and understand causes. And for this I find my bullet journal super helpful. Another tool that helps me to reflect my day, my mood and thoughts is my daily reflection page that moved to the next spread this month. Last month I had a page with two columns, one for something good, one for general reflection. And even though I liked it, I found it didn't offer enough space for me. So much I have a whole spread and decided to leave two lines a day instead of just one.
then I try to remember to keep writing down something good and a reflection, even though there is no dedicated space for those things anymore. Once I thought I was finished with the setup, I realized I wasn't really happy with the paintings because I thought they looked quite flat and boring. So I wanted to add some more detail and color and also fix some mistakes that I made through the setup. Maybe you've seen them, maybe not. <laughs> and for this I used my dry gouaches which are in this palette that I bought and whenever I want to use them I spray them with our plant spray bottle wait a bit and they were pretty well again. And so I started to paint the lemons again with some more intense color, a more yellow yellow. And um, I also added some shadows and highlights again and the little dots on the lemons as well as some shadows on the background. And I think those changes really turned the whole setup into the way I imagined it to be. And now I enjoy looking at it and I am happy with it. So I know that even though that this video is on the longer side from the bullet journal videos, it can give you the impression that this was a fast setup and that it was done in like one or two hours maybe. I just want to let you know that this is not really the case. I filmed this over two days. On the first day I filmed like maybe four or five hours and did all the main setup with the paintings to the point where I thought it was finished and the next day was when I decided to go in again with some more details and I guess I filmed some more one or two hours. So this setup took me about maybe six, seven hours in total and I know that this is quite a lot of time and it might look like bullet journaling is a lot of work especially when you're interested in trying out the tracking system or something and this is holding you back from trying it out. I wanted to share some ideas how you can achieve something nice looking but not spend as much time as I did here. And as always, one of my ideas is just to simplify the effort and not paint all the things. You could use some um, brush pens like Tombos or pencils or stuff like that instead of using some real paints because I find that mixing colors, letting it dry, all that stuff takes quite a long time. So if you like to use some colors and draw by yourself, then you could just do that with more easy to use supplies. You could as well use some color paper or just some paper that has some something printed on it and glue it to your journal and try to leave out the spaces like I did here with the white space. And also you can use some sort of stickers or washi tapes, print out some stuff, glue it in and all of that can save you a lot of time I guess. But as I said many times before, for me personally, taking the time to create some nice looking pages is some sort of self-care time for me. This is a time where I cannot spend time overthinking, being anxious, because I am focused on my bullet journal and creating something that is nice looking at. I think that taking this time to be creative and create something by myself try to improve my creative skills is definitely time that is well spent 
And I also find that otherwise I will probably just use the time with scrolling on my phone, watching YouTube videos and doing other things that are more or less productive and useful. And so yeah, for me, this is definitely time that I am looking forward every single month. I already said that in another video, if you always find yourself thinking, hmm, I want to be more creative and draw more or paint more or whatever, then a bullet journal is definitely the perfect place to get that time in your daily life because it forces you, if you commit to it, <laughs> um, to sit down and be some sort of creative at least one time a month. And I say it forces you, but it doesn't force you to. You don't have to be creative, of course. You can create as minimal or as maximalist spreads, as much art or as little art as you want. The main thing is that you should enjoy bullet journaling and you should find a way that is helpful for you, that is making sense to you and that can be in a similar way, in a creative way, in a very information-based way. It can be about productivity for you or about observing yourself, writing down thoughts, ideas, all that stuff. But yeah, I, I just wanted to add that in the end because A, I had too much time here <laughs> that was without me saying something and B, because I don't want you to watch my videos and think, oh, I can never try bullet journaling because I am not creative or something. Um, creativity is really not the goal in bullet journaling. I talked about that in my video, how to bullet journal. Just some last words so you don't get overwhelmed by this and not keep away from bullet journaling, if you know what I mean. And here we are at the final flip through. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that it was helpful and inspiring. And if you're still here at the end, wow, thanks, that's amazing. So cool that you stayed with me. <laughs> Drop the obvious lemon emoji into the comments so I know you're still here. And if you enjoy my videos and haven't yet, subscribe to my channel because what are you waiting for? <laughs> Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're doing great and that I see you in my next video. Bye.